This tutorial is for fourth grade, module five, lesson 13. In this lesson, we're going to continue to use number lines to help us compare fractions. The first directions say to place the following fractions on the number lines. And what you'll notice about the fractions is that they're all improper fractions, meaning the numerator is greater than the denominator, which also tells us that the fractions are greater than one whole. So you can see that the number line starts with one whole and ends at two holes. So we're going to start at one and plot the fractions between one and two. So if I start with four thirds, the one whole mark would represent three thirds. Three thirds is the same as one whole. Now I just have to divide the distance between the one and two into thirds. So there's my thirds between the one whole and the two holes and I need to show where four-thirds falls. Again, one whole is three-thirds, so four-thirds would be the next third past one whole. To find 11 six, I'm going to start with the fact that one whole is equal to six six, and now I have to divide the distance between the one and the two into six equal pieces. I'm going to start by dividing it in half, and then I'm going to divide each of those halves into three pieces, and that gives me my sixth. Now I just need to find 11 six. I'm at six six when I'm at the one hole, so I can just count seven six, eight six, nine six, ten six, eleven six. And that makes sense because 12 six would be the same as two holes. If it takes six to make a hole and I have 12, then I have two holes. So there's my 11 six. When I work with my twelfths, I need to start at the one whole mark with 12 twelfths, and I need to put my twelfths in. Again, I'm going to start at the halfway point, and then I'm going to divide the half and half in each of those into three pieces. So I have six on this side. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I have six on this side. That gives me my twelfths between one and two. Now I need to find 17 twelfths. I start with 12 twelfths at the one whole point. I have 13 twelfths, 14 twelfths, 15 twelfths, 16 twelfths, 17 twelfths. So there's my 17 twelfths. Now to compare my fractions per, for problem two, they've been written as mixed numerals. If I have one and five six, that's the same thing as 11 six, because the one is six six. I combine that with my five six and I get 11 six. So 11 six was this point on the number line. I'm comparing that to one and five twelfths. Again, one is 12 twelfths. So if I combine those two, that means that one and five twelfths is the same as 17 twelfths. 17 twelfths is closer to zero than 11 six. So 17 twelfths is smaller than 11 six, or in other words, one and five six is greater than one and five twelfths. If I look at one and one third, that's the same thing as four thirds. One whole is three thirds. I add one more to it and I get four thirds. So that's this point on the number line, and I'm comparing it to one and five twelfths, or 17 twelfths, which is this point on the number line. One and one third is less than one and five twelfths because it's closer to zero on the number line. In this section, I'm going to use my knowledge of the number line to help me compare my fractions. I'm comparing three eighths to seven twelfths first. I know that four eighths would be the halfway point if I'm working with eighths, and six twelfths would be the halfway point if I'm working with twelfths. Seven twelfths is more than one half, three eighths is less than one half, so three eighths needs to be smaller than seven twelfths. You can use that same idea for question B. Again, six twelfths is halfway, four eighths is halfway, seven eighths is greater than one half, five twelfths is less than one half, so five twelfths 
has to be less than 7 eighths. If I look at the fractions in problem C, I start with 8 6 and I'm comparing it to 11 12 Because 8 is greater than 6, that tells me that this fraction is greater than one whole. In fact, if I break it down with a number bond, I could show it as 6 6 and 2 6, which is the same as 1 and 2 6. Because it's greater than one whole and 11 12 is less than one whole, then 11 12 has to be less than 8 6. For question D, if I think about my twelfths again, 6 twelfths is the halfway point. 5 twelfths is just 1 twelfth under my halfway point. If I compare that to 1 third, 1 third is quite a distance away from 1 half. So that tells me that 1 third is less than 5 twelfths. In fact, if we compared our thirds on the number line to our twelfths, you would see that one third is the same as four twelfths. So it is definitely smaller than five twelfths. To compare seven fifths and eleven tenths, I can use the logic again that the seven fifths tells me that this fraction is greater than one whole. Eleven tenths is also greater than one whole. 11 tenths could be thought of as 1 and 1 tenth. 7 fifths is the same as 1 and 2 fifths. If I think of terms of the size of my fractions, 1 fifth is greater than 1 tenth, so 2 fifths has to be greater than 1 tenth. That tells me that 7 fifths is greater than 11 tenths. And one more question. Again, I have an improper fraction here. 5 fourths tells me that this fraction is greater than one whole. 7 eighths means that that fraction is less than one whole. So 5 fourths is greater than 7 eighths.